everyone, my name is DevTech, and today we're going to do another tutorial on EvoCron Legacy here. Um, we're going to be doing the server setup tutorial, so you can kind of find out how to set up your multiplayer server for EvoCron. So uh, let's start with locating EvoCron Legacy in your library. Then you want to right click it and go into properties and you'll end up with this window over here. Um, what you want to do is you want to click on local files and go into browse local files and this will show you your uh, default EvoCron legacy uh, folder and what we're looking for is EvoCron legacy server.exe this isn't actually a server launcher it's a setup so you can execute this launch it and then you can accept the agreement and read all of this stuff I'm not going to do it right now uh, you can set up where you want to install it. You can do it anywhere nowadays. <laughs> Before we had a little bit of a hiccup, a hiccup with the um, well placements, but that worked out in the end. Um, so now we can actually install it anywhere without issues, which is good. Uh, you might want to install that. I canceled out of it because I already have it installed, and I'll swap to that file right now. So this is what we are left end up with. Uh, you'll have all of these files pretty much except for these two and possibly the chat log faction map or s some of these text files might not be there. But that's fine. We don't really need them. Except for those universe faulty. You really need those. You, you should have those. Um, the mainly important files in this listing are the following four files. We have EvoCron Legacy Server.exe, that is the server launcher. We have EvoCron Legacy Server 2D.exe, that's the server launcher. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, we have the readme.htm, which will open a local uh, website on your browser so you can kind of see. It's basically manual. Um, and we have text8.dat. Now, text8.dat is actually, you might as well call it the server config. I, I don't know why it's called text8.dat. I guess it's some sort of weird preset thing with the game developers having set it that way. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, it's just called the cryptic text8.dat. And by default, no human person would decide, hey, yeah, that sounds like a thing I'd want to edit, but apparently it is something you want to edit, so keep that in mind. All right. First off, I'm going to go over the EvoCron Legacy Server and EvoCron Legacy Server 2D. Which one should you use? Which one should you use? Um, actually, in fact, there's no real need... Um, there isn't really much of a difference between them. What the difference is between them is a little bit in file size. Um, and the EvoCron Legacy Server.exe is actually a uh, version, it's the default version, what you generally would use. And it uses your graphics unit in your computer to render stuff in the uh, server system which isn't too intense and doesn't really matter too much. Uh, unless you have an old and really bad graphics card, then you might not want to use that. And then you want to use the EvoCron Legacy Server 2D.exe, which is the different version. And instead of using the graphics unit, it uses your um, CPU, your uh, computing unit, calculation unit of fun. So, um... That kind of gives you an idea. If you have a really good CPU but a bad GPU, you want to use the 2D. Else, just stick with this one, the, the normal one. It's fine. If you have low memory stuff, use the 2D one. So basically, if you have a bad computer, use 2D. Else, use the normal one. Um, then we have the README, which I'm not going to go into for a second. Uh, until I open up this text8.dat. Uh, I'm going to open it up with my notepad plus plus and you're probably going to see a whole bunch of stuff you might not want to see, but whatever. All right, so um, what do we want to change in here? 
Now, if you read this little comment at the top here that the uh, developer set up, uh, you want to edit the lines that are not 200 to 380. Why? Because 200 and 380, they just change text. Um, 400 and higher are the actual server settings. Now you can see over here, I did change 200 to change to say uh, DevTech's hideout, although I'm not sure that makes much of a difference, but I'm just gonna mention that it's there. Um, right, and now for the actual settings you might wanna change down here. Um, starting over here, like halfway through at line, uh, a hundred and let's say 172 over here is the actual start of the configuration. Um, so what do we have here? Well, these four, I think, no, five, sorry, these five ones are the uh, message of the day that you get when you launch and you connect to the server. Um, you have line 500 and 501. So these are used for specifying a local IP address and an internet IP address. Now the internet IP address, generally you really shouldn't have to define it. Uh, you can see in, in my text eight dot dat here that I haven't defined it and it works fine for people to connect because uh, it will auto detect. But for the local IP address, if you want to use a specific local IP address, if you have like two connections, uh, you might want to fill in the one that you need. Um, just so you know. Um, over here we have 502, which is also kind of important. Uh, do you want your server listed publicly or not? Um, that's a one or a zero. Um, I'm not going to go into that one. You can set up a password here. You can see I set up a bogus one for us to see. Uh, this will be an admin password that you kind of type in. The explanation is over here. Um, so you can read that and pause if you want to read that fully. Um, 700, if you want to auto have it auto start and fully initialize, you want to put in enable here like this, or like so. Um, but otherwise, otherwise you, you don't you don't have to do that. You can always do it manually if you want to. Um, you can specify special resolutions and stuff. I haven't really bothered. Make sure that 801 is at 60 for the maximum uh, FPS value. Because sometimes, like when I when I first set it up, it did not have 60 there, and it caused some issues for me. So just make sure it's 60 or 30, depending on whatever, depending on your computer setup. Uh, VSync value, not really necessary, but if you have issues with the visuals, you might want to turn that on. Um, you can specify whether you want CPU to be like limited in its usages, uh, not really necessary. Most of these are not really necessary unless you're having issues, so I'm just trying to try and skip to the ones you really need. Um, here, for example, is one we really need. 870 and 880. Now these are for specifying your ports. If you know anything about the multiplayer game so far, then you know that to connect to a multiplayer server, you need two ports. And you can redefine them here if you want to, or you can leave them blank for the default. Mine generally say uh, 27015 or something like that, because I'm heavily into Steam. But, you know, that's completely up to you guys. Whatever you've got port forwarded. And if you need to do port forwarding, I'm going to put a little button here. I have a link for my port forwarding tutorial in case you have not yet done such a thing. You'll need to do that. Um, and whatever you do, for the love of God, never DMZ. Right. Another important kind of thing here for internal gameplay is um, the economy. If you don't, if you want the entirety of the changes to the economy to be player based, you can turn all of these off. Uh, I turned them all on because I like the universe to be dynamic without having many users. So they're on one for on. Let's see here. Uh, what else? 
900 for a default password so you can protect your server from other people. Alternatively, you can go back up higher where the other line was to hide the server from people and it wouldn't be that much of a problem. Uh, what other important ones have we got here? Here's for PVP in case people are into that kind of stuff. Uh, you can choose whether you can allow single player profiles to play on your multiplayer server or not. This is kind of more an anti-cheat kind of thing because you could play a lot on single player and then go to multiplayer with a really kitted out ship. So if you don't like people using single player to kit themselves out before they go into your server, then you can turn it off there. Um, the maximum amount of players, kind of important. Uh, it's just the number value, you just add it there. there. It does say what the range is, it's between 2 and 36. You can't put it on 1, unfortunately, for some people. <laughs> I don't know why you would want to, it's a multiplayer server, come on! Um, and other than that, we are done, pretty much. Unless you want to, like, do voice chat in-game. But uh, other than that, there's no real other settings to do other than if you want to mess around with the system names. Which I don't know why you would do, but okay. And we're just going to close that. No, we're not going to save. Um, right, and then there's the readme.htm. I kept this one for last because I pretty much just went through it with you guys in a very, very short way. Um... So it, it, it details all of the installation and setup. If you guys want to be sure that your server is completely fully set up, um, you can go over all of this again. And as you can see here again, it, even the devs warn, don't use fucking DMZ unless you want to kill yourself. <laughs> don't do it. It's bad. Um, but yeah, this basically goes over through the entire function of all of the server you might want to have a quick read through this it is very important and interesting stuff but i'm not going to go over it because i just kind of went through most of it kind of skimmed it through for you guys um but it has some uh, interesting intel in here but as you can see you just kind of double click it and it'll open up a browser window for you so don't don't be alarmed when you double click it and it and that happens um, and other than that, we're almost pretty much done. So, what do we do now? Let's quickly go through the actual server program. I'm going to launch it with my GPU right here. Okay. I'm not going to go through the uh, 2D version. It's basically the same server in the exact same way, so don't worry about it. All right, so what do we have here? To the left, player listing. You can see the server itself is listed as a player, which is interesting to note. In the middle, we've got events and chat, which you can kind of keep tabs on. Naughty, naughty. Uh, we've got a timer to designate the current local time. This is my current local time whilst recording this video. And we have a map. Yeah, it's a, it, it, it's a faction map, pretty much, kind of, I guess. Um... Not really sure what the uses of this, other than I'm pretty sure you can see players on it. But, you know, as the host, I guess that's your prerogative. Right, to the left, we have the local IP, which you can set up. Uh, we can get your internet IP, which is currently empty because I haven't done it yet. Connection status, not connected because we haven't started the server yet. Multiplayer type is host because, of course, we're hosting. Um, and the visibility status and all of that. Now, interestingly enough, we've got the buttons here for get internet IP address, which you want to click in order to launch your server. It'll get your current IP address, which I blanked out, but you know. Uh, we have the connection status. As you can see, we're still not connected. We have our IP, but now we still have to connect in order to launch the system up correctly. Um, and then we have the button here to connect. So as I click this, poof, it kind of went, it kind of went weird. That's normal. Um, you can see everything is in the green. We're fully hosted up. Uh, it says the multiplayer is now active. So now people can join. Now we're fully done. 
Um, we also have saving the chat log and map button right there in case you want to force a save. We have a refresh button, which apparently it, on my edited version uh, crashes the software. That's normal. It, I'm using a temperamental. I'm using a very temperamental. Uh, well, test version, which is older, so don't blame that. And there's the autosave chat log and map button, which allows you to turn on autosaving or turn it off so it doesn't autosave all the time. Um, and to the little window over here, you can see stuff just go crazy. All right, so let's quickly go over this. Um, we have the game name, which you saw. I, I wrote this in line 200. That's what line 200 was for, for me to have my game name. I can see the maximum players. So you, if you noticed it correctly in the video earlier, I set it to nine, and the maximum players is eight. That's because one slot. I I will point out again, one slot's being used by the server. So remember that. You need nine in order to do eight. Uh, you can change your password, and you can change whether uh, single player profiles are allowed, yeah or nay. You change the update rate. I'm not going to go into what that is specifically. If you if if you want to know exactly what that is, go through the um, special file that will explain that. The uh, uh, manual read me thing, and you can turn on or off voice chat with the click of a button. That is interesting. Um, we have the GPU usage here. Now you can see it keeps spiking between absolutely nothing and totally using all the CPU. Uh, that's pretty much normal. It does that for me all the time. Um, and then we have is the version number. I'm not sure if this number is supposed to be here. I'm pretty sure it's not, but whatever. Now, as a quick notice, as you can see, some of these are grayed out. Now, these are grayed out because we're currently running the server. If we turn it off, they'll go uh, they'll go blue. <laughs> I wanted to say green for some reason. Yeah, here we go. They'll go blue, and you can change them again, and you can access them. But you can't change them whilst mid-game. And that is pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe if you feel like it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.